Social change is often created not outside the system, but by partnering with existing institutions. For the past 20 years, this has been the approach of the Barbara and Edward Netter Center for Community Partnerships at Penn. In the 60s, a lot of the activity were outside the institutions themselves. When I came to the University of Pennsylvania as an undergraduate, it was a period of extraordinary activism uh, related to anti-war activities and civil rights and human rights, and I became very, very involved. Too much of the 60s was counter-institutional, and one of the great changes and developments now is if the, the understanding and recognition the change can occur with and through institutions. So the fact is institutions have changed. When I was a student, there was no academically based community service uh, at Penn. There was no service learning. You did your work outside of the curriculum. Penn was attempting to create distance and would act unidirectionally, even if it were in the community's interest. It wasn't democratic. It wasn't working together. It wasn't people in the community, in the schools, in the university, learning from and with each other, it was done to the community. In terms of what developed out of the Metter Center, in my wildest dreams, I couldn't have thought of that. In 1985, Harkavy co-taught a Penn class about urban university community relationships. A group of undergraduates did incredibly powerful research, calling for the integration of funding with a number of programs to do a better and less expensive youth corps. And their research led to uh, the West Philadelphia Improvement Corps. Later that year, in an attempt to end an armed confrontation, Philadelphia police bombed a house in West Philadelphia. This led to the MOVE fire. Right after they finished their work, the MOVE fire occurred in West Philadelphia, which burnt down a neighborhood in West Philadelphia, in, in the community. And as a result of our meetings with the mayor and other individuals and a special summer program was created to work with every young person affected by the fire and it was called the West Philadelphia Improvement Corps and it was based on the student idea of combining agencies and programs working together with the university and that was our first real world pro project and program that emerged from wonderful student research and it was in that summer that we learned about the idea of schools as being hubs of neighborhoods through our own practice, and that's how university-assisted community schools began to develop. In 1988, the Arts and Sciences made us a program and raised our role within the school. Uh, that really was very significant because it signified that this was going to be an ongoing development within that school. One of our major projects has been for a long time the development of our Urban Nutrition Initiative, or now Agatson Urban Nutrition Initiative. That good? We now work in 22 public schools. We reach 12,000 students every month, and we are um, about 150 Penn student volunteers and work-study students work with us every year, along with about 10 academically-based community service courses. It definitely has brought more of an interest in their community and thinking about their community. We do a lot of outreach projects, um, and so the kids are exposed to just different areas that they didn't think about where gardens could be. At first I thought gardening was just planting flowers, but I guess not. You actually do have to like put time and patience into the stuff. It's not going to just grow. You got to do a lot to keep it together, watch out for the bugs and stuff. In 2004, Amy Gutman became president of Penn, and I'll never. And I was very excited, having known uh, President Gutman's academic work. And when I first met her, when she first came, she spoke very highly of the then Center for Community Partnerships, and said so we want to do more of this work. We cherish our relations with our neighbors. Those relationships have strengthened Penn academically and they have strengthened West Philadelphia and Philadelphia as a whole. I was sitting with some colleagues and we all looked at each other and, and uh, I, I don't know if we, we uh, gave high fives because it wasn't the appropriate place to do that, but I think we all shook hands uh, in back of the chairs in Irvine Auditorium. Because of the extraordinary generosity, vision, and commitment of Barbara and Edward Netter, uh, we became a named center 
as a result of their generous endowment gift. And that transformed our work. It assured us of permanence. It enabled us to spread our ideas around the country on an ongoing permanent basis. And it helped us to really strive and reach for greater um, impact. I certainly did not realize or recognize the true potentiality of colleges and universities to produce change. The relationships are most important. That it's the working together is central and that enables the work to continue but it also in fact helps you overcome the obstacle of universities deciding for the community what it needs to do.